Hello and welcome back. So in this video, we are going to talk about network interview questions intermediate level. So first question, what is a VLAN? Why would you use it? VLAN is a virtual local area network, is a logical grouping of devices that appear to be in the same LAN, even if they are not on even if they are on separate IP subnetworks, which help reduce network traffic and provide segmentation. So VLANs uh, on us on traditionally, if you wanted a separate network, you had to have separate hardware. One switch for this, the other switch for that. And then you will install routers for them to connect uh, e with each other. Now that is uh, that uh, takes space, physical space, and adds to your expense. With virtual lands, what you do is if you have to create two uh, two different networks containing two different departments traffic, you use VLAN. Basically, it's the same hardware, but the the traffic is separated logically. Uh, there are VLAN tags involved. Basically, through the tags, uh, the switch takes the traffic and make sure that yeah, there is no cross traffic going on. Uh, for that, there will be a level three switches that will act as a router as well if traffic is allowed from one network to another. VLAN does help you with broadcast storms uh, where and this segmentation reduces the uh, packet collision as well. Second question, can you explain the difference between a switch and a hub? A switch forwards data to a specific device, whereas a hub broadcasts data to all devices on a network. So hub is an older devices. I don't, I haven't seen one. Uh, they, they pretty much are obsolete and been replaced by switch. So back in the day, hubs, uh, for example, it's a four port hub. Traffic comes on port one and it's being transmitted on two, three, and four. So wherever it was intended, for example, it was intended for port three, the computer connected on port three, that will accept and process it. Port, the computers connected on port two and four, they will get the traffic, but they will discard it because it was not meant for them. Switch came in with the, the idea that switch itself uh, stops acting as a broadcaster and more like it will when the traffic comes to it it notes down the MAC address and once it does the it knows the MAC address hey port one this MAC this traffic came but the the MAC the computer that is connected has this MAC address it saves that so next time when somebody sends that traffic it does not have to send it to everyone it just forwards it to that specific MAC address. So if it has the MAC address, it sends it. If it does not, it takes the IP address and sends it to router. And router knows the that address. It routes it. It if it does not, it sends it to the next one. And that, it's a complex uh, network. Uh, uh, like when you go and read, read on topologies, you will know how different routers know what how to route the, route that traffic. But in a, in a, uh, at this level, it's just MAC address based. Switch keeps track of MAC addresses. Hub did not. What is the function of a network interface card? A network interface card is a hardware component that allows computers to connect to internet. So basically, in the in the previous question, when I said that computer two and four, they they got the traffic, but they did not process it, discard it. It happens at the NIC level. So NIC receives the traffic, but then it say, hey, okay, this is not my MAC address. Uh, this is traffic is not intended for me. So it does not forward it to the actual computer environment. It discarded right there. So NIC is where the physical means of a device that connects. So in a computer, you have Ethernet port. Uh, on a maybe on your phone, it's a wireless NIC. What is a default gateway? Why is it necessary? So default gateway, and again, question four, when I said that if it has the MAC address, 
uh, it's forward to traffic if it does not it send it to router so that is your default gateway if it has the it knows where the device is based on its mac address fine let's send the traffic there if not it will say hey i don't know let me send it to somebody who knows and that's your default gateway so a default gateway serves as an access point or ip router that a network device used to send information to device in another network or the internet so uh, so again when you 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 read up on networking uh db and network plus ccn or something uh, you will understand it more uh, clearly. So each device, each router, each uh, switch, if they don't know where that addressee is, it sends to it sends the traffic to one above it. And eventually, somebody knows where that traffic is. For example, your uh, computer does not know where Google.com is. It asks your uh, router your router does not know so it asks you uh, your ISP router and your ISP routers only knows it because so many people had asked about it for example nobody asked it for maybe I think the uh, timeout time is maybe a few hundred seconds if nobody asks for uh, where the google.com is it will be deleted from its cache and it will have to go up the chain of uh, uh, the root routers and uh, uh, th there are 13 um, routers, uh, not router servers, DNS servers. So it's interesting. Uh, but at this point, default gateway is when the device does not know where, where that address is. It just goes to the default device and so on. Can you explain how a network, so network address translation, that at one time saved our internet. So when the uh, internet was began uh, back in the 60s, whenever they thought 4 billion addresses were more than enough. And for each, all of these uh, IP addresses, they just like today's IPv6 addresses, they were all public IP addresses, they were all routable IP addresses. But NAT, and if each time a company needed uh, its one of its computer to connect to the internet or talk to another com uh, internet, it had to have a public IP address. Otherwise, it won't be. How NAT, what it does is that it allows one public IP address, and behind it, you can have hundreds of computers that will use the same IP address to communicate uh, everything on the internet. For example, uh, in an office environment, there are, let's say, 1,500 computers. You cannot go and buy 1,500 IP addresses. Uh, they, you, you need deep pockets to get that uh, many IP addresses, public IP addresses. So what happens is you get your IP address uh, and for home networks, yeah, you just get like you spend 50 bucks and you get a public IP address from your ISP. But in behind you have like maybe close to 30 devices, uh, at least 10 maybe. All those 10 IP, uh, 10, 10 devices you connect to internet. Uh, they are, they are getting your streams, your emails, your web pages through that one public IP address that you got from your uh, ISP. Net basically what it does is with each time it sends a, a request it get, attaches a port uh, so your ip uh, your router the isp modem sends that with and notes down what port was it and when it comes back it uh, sends the traffic back to that port only and not to everybody else. So network address translation allows a single device to act as an agent between the internet and a local network, which means that only a single unique IP address is required to represent an entire group of computers. It, it just says, and the port it comes into play when one computer is going to five different websites. Uh, otherwise, if it's 10 devices, five devices or 10 devices connected to internet, but getting just one request, it will be there uh, their private IP address internal and your modem will or router will remember hey this this is the internal address that asks for this web page this email and this web stream but in case if there's single devices asking for so many things they it will start adding port to it 
and port will say okay this is for that application this uh, traffic is this for the next application what is a proxy server and when would you use one a proxy server is a go between for a workstation and the internet providing security administrative control and caching services so proxy in corporate environment is basically to enforce their uh, not only for their security uh, configuration for example what sites are allowed what's not uh, but it does provide security in terms that uh, you the cache uh, it's a caching engine but pro providing security by the uh, restrict what website you cannot uh, access uh, it does give you the caching engine where it will it, it won't it saves bandwidth it won't go to google.com every time that you try to access that page but it will go once you hit the search button so it will send the traffic up to google uh, another proxy thing is the reverse proxy where it's put in front of uh, your uh, web servers so it basically caches uh, the web page on the proxy server and not not let uh, the outside hitting the web server directly and it goes and fetch the new page only when it detects that web page was updated can you explain the difference between tcp and udp a very very important thing some people might be asked uh, uh, like what's a three-way handshake that is tcp tcp's transmission control protocol is connection oriented where basically uh, both computers uh, transfer uh, packets back and forth uh, that is a three-way handshake it's ACK uh, uh, so they know that hey we will be transferring now uh, we'll be communicating so it guarantees the delivery of packets so for example uh, if uh, you see, uh, th there are like sequence numbers involved so what happens is when you send a large file and file that goes over there the other computer will match the sequence numbers and then there will be a termination sequence that will tell the other computer hey this is the last message and this is these many pack packets i have sent the other computer calculates it and verifies and then they uh, disconnect but what happens in udp is user data game protocols for example when you're taking a call some sometime you don't hear the person correctly but uh, it, the packets don't come it's just like a stream it just sends or your youtube or your uh, uh netflix same thing udp so there is no connection oriented if a packet is lost it's lost if a pack if some of the packets took the longer route to reach you they will come out of sequence what is arp and what it is function arp is address resolution program protocol and it's used to map an ip address to a physical mac address on the local network so arp if you go to cmd and you can run this command to see all of the mac addresses uh, that is connected we, uh, on a networking level you, do, you want to do that to verify a device so for example you don't have to walk maybe 10 minutes to go all the way on the other side of the building or up a few stairs uh, to check on that device physically you if you know the mac address and you do know when you are doing the installation and you have the documentation you can simply verify hey that device is connecting or not super helpful saved me a lot of trips when i was uh, uh, in uh, a amazon uh, environment what are the different types of network topologies so these where you know the different networks network topologies include bus star ring mesh tree edc uh, there are some advantages disadvantages most of the time within star network for example your home is a star network uh, you have a central device modem or router which can all of your devices connect to it so it's kind of form a star or ring is where traffic goes one way and the other way so it's uh, one it just go in ring one of the nodes go down you don't have a network bus is a straight line where uh, individual hosts can go down 
and other will still have the traffic but if at one any point where that single line that connecting all of these hosts goes down there won't be any connectivity from uh, this side of the uh, this, uh, bus versus where the cart is and the other side mesh is where each device directly connects to other devices full mesh is extremely uh, expensive nobody ever make it they do rely on partial mesh uh you tree is uh, a hierarchical where kind of like uh, some devices are on top some devices and like trickling down uh, some devices have more than one connection to each other some devices have just one link so it it, it, it based on the needs can you explain the concept of quality of service quality of service is a mechanism to ensure better service to a certain types of network traffic so called qos um, it used to be very common windows xp days or windows 7 where they say hey your windows is uh, basically not allowing you to utilize 100 percent of your bandwidth it keeps 20 uh, percent to qos uh, so basically what happens is the quality of service uh, on your network level some devices especially if you have a hardware firewall uh, prioritize which traffic needs to go faster which traffic can uh, sustain a delay and it won't matter for example uh, imagine you're gaming and you're streaming and then you are somebody in the home is uh going to website so some people they want their gaming they don't want any delay or if somebody is streaming they don't want to have a a experience that is not very good they want their stream to be smooth so quality of service automatically your router this uh, they are smart routers now they decided or oh, you can go and tweak it uh, it just it's, it, basic idea is to prioritize traffic if it's a business environment they will have with Cisco phones uh, they are either not uh, routed so they want to have that Cisco phones to have more bandwidth and more priority over any other traffic all right so these are the 10 question of intermediate level I hope this video has helped you if it has please rate comment subscribe and share and i see you in the next one